Buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. Today is finally the follow-up of me testing some hyped up niche fragrances episode 4. This is a permanent series here on my channel. Uh, I always do a first impression and then when I test these fragrances I do the follow-up. I will leave the first impression of all the fragrances that I'm going to talk about in the description down below and in the eye up here. I always find it quite informative to have a first impression and a follow-up on fragrances because it gives you a feeling of the fragrance and how it develops. We have this time quite a selection. So we have Atomic Rose, we have Chanel Beige, we have Dama Bianca, Chinatown from Bond Number no. 9, 100 Silent Ways from Nishane. I mean, quite a collection. So if you want to know what I think about these fragrances, then please keep on watching. But before we start, if you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. My name is Noura and on this channel I mostly talk about fragrances. I do some also makeup, skincare and lifestyle in general. So if this is your thing, then please consider subscribing and also hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload a new video. Also follow me on Instagram where I post some exclusive content that I don't do here on YouTube. And without further ado, let's start. So this time I will speak about all these fragrances, ranking them. And before starting, I have to admit I am quite nervous this time doing this episode because we are talking about you really loved fragrances. Some are very hyped up that people love and some are like ranked really high more by like real fragrance critiques. So I just want to start by saying this is my personal opinion. If you love any of these fragrances, you love them <laughs> and wear them and it's okay if you disagree with me, tell me in the comments. I have no problem. You know, fragrances are subjective guys. So this is my personal experience and my personal opinion. So we have 12 fragrances as usual. I would start by the least favorite. So number 12, we have the rough Oud Stars Alexandria too. When I say I dislike this fragrance is an understatement. I hate it. I absolutely hate this fragrance and I can't understand. How can they like this one? This is an extremely harsh, medicinal, woody fragrance. It's awful. It's just awful. When I was testing this fragrance, I was suffering. It's almost an astringent feeling. Yeah, it feels like as if you have broken some kind of medicine on the floor and now your whole room smells like it. This is very potent. So once you spray this, you will have it on your skin the whole day and you will project like crazy. And also the room where you spray the fragrance will smell like it. Very masculine and very woody. This is in the opening quite a medicinal sharp lavender. Main note here is rosewood and I can't understand why they called it wood for um, wood stars because really I can't almost detect the wood here. It's all about the rosewood here. It has a lot of notes. Mostly what you get is rosewood and the lavender, especially in the opening. Yeah, the wood is really faint, really faint and really in the background. So if you were expecting an oud fragrance, this is not it. Honestly, I can't recommend this fragrance because I can see something special about it. <laughs> let's see, Ap apart the performance that is stellar. Now let's get to number 11. And that comes from a brand that I have quite a collection of its fragrances and it's Lady Vengeance from Julie Tazagan. This was created by none other than Francisco John himself. <sighs> and I don't like it. Uh, yeah, after so many hits with Julie Tazagan, Lately, I don't have the best uh, luck with their fragrances. This is a cheaper rose fragrance. This again opens up with quite um, fresh 
lavender and rose and it doesn't take long and you get this very soapy rosy feeling it smells to me like a rose soap bar not a cheap one but still very soapy it's musky there's patchouli i would say the main character here is the rose but this is not a rose that i would personally prefer and again a fragrance that i wouldn't recommend i mean rose is one of the most popular notes in fragrances they are so so many rose fragrances on the market cheaper one even this nothing special it has an amazing performance it has iso is super and broxen so you can imagine it lasts very very long and it does project i would say moderate to strong sillage anyway apart from the performance that is the only thing that i would say i like about it and like alexandria too i would not recommend this fragrance now let's get to number 10 and between number 10 and 9 i was like going <laughs> back and forth but at the end i decided on this one this is Com Com toi sur Pacifique. I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. Aloha Tiare. And this is a good tropical fragrance for those who love a very sweet, creamy, almost santan lotion type of a fragrance. I am not a fan of these type of fragrances and it's not for that that I ranked this low. I ranked this, this low because it's not very unique. It is unique in the sense that it is good quality. I mean, can you see the stain? It has an amazing lasting power and performance and it's very oily. So you can see that this is high quality. And mostly what you get here is tiari flower and coconut. I always get the ylang ylang in the opening, but it dries down very, very creamy, very oily feeling. and you get coconut tiari flower and some vanilla this is how this fragrance smells quite simplistic in a way very tropical very very long lasting and has amazing projection and this is by the way the edt not the eau de parfum so <laughs> i don't know how the eau de parfum can outperform this one because this as i said in performance it's amazing and i ranked it only low because it's not mind-blowing and Comptoir Sud Pacifique is one of the affordable niche fragrances they have almost designer prices so don't worry about that I would highly recommend it if you love tiare flower if you love coconut tropical fragrances get yourself Aloha Tiare but it's not mind-blowing don't spray it on your clothes just warning let's get to another vacation type kind of a fragrance and this is still in Rio from Olfactive Studios. This brand actually creates its fragrances um, inspired by photography. And in this case, it's a photo uh, of Rio just when the sun was coming out, if I'm not mistaken. And this is not a bad fragrance, but still I am not a fan of it. It's unique. I would give it that. It's fresh. It's slightly fruity. It's slightly sweet with a hint of rum, so it's slightly boozy. I would say it's a good representation of the place, although I've never went to Brazil, but from what I imagine, I would say this is a good representation, but still I don't like this fragrance very much. There is something that bothers me in it that I can pinpoint what it is. And if I didn't know what am I, what am I smelling and I had to guess to which brand uh, it's this fragrance belongs i would say creed there is something yeah i don't know very creedy about it <laughs> that is even a word creed fragrances especially the fresh ones that i have tried at least have this feeling to them and yeah this has the same thing and as you all know i did not have a lot of luck with creed fragrances and i also don't like this one it's definitely unisex leaning slightly masculine and on my skin it had a modish longevity and a solid moderate sillage 
So it's to me just an okay fragrance. Next, let's get to another brand that I have no luck with. Everything that I tried, I did not like, or at least was not special to me. And that is by Rado. And the fragrance that I have is Pulp. Now, this fragrance is quite an experience. I'm a little bit torn about because I hate the opening and the mid dry down, but I actually like that dry down. I wouldn't say I love it, but I like it. So Pulp is a fruity fragrance. And in the opening and in the mid dry down, you get a lot of fig. Fig is the main note in this fragrance. And in the opening and the mid dry down, it's fig, but also the fig leaf. So it's a little bit bitter, sharp green. And in contrast with this extremely sweet fruitiness from the red apple, the black currant and praline, it's very sweet and fruity, but I feel like these two really clash. So this green bitterish aspect that is in the opening and the mid dry down really, really bothers me because I find it smells a little bit like a mess. It smells as if you are eating a fruity dessert under a fig tree. This is the best description I can give to this fragrance. However, in the dry down, this bitterish green aspect does almost totally fade away. Some remain, but I mean really, really little, at least on my skin. And it becomes a total sweet, fruity fragrance. There are also floral notes, but honestly, it's all about the fruits here. So fig, red apple, black currant. This is what all this fragrance is all about. And I actually quite enjoy it in the dry down, but it takes a long time for me to arrive to that stage. And even in the dry down, it's a little bit too sweet for me. I am not into sweet fruity fragrances, generally speaking. So I would consider this a good fragrance for someone who is looking for a good fruity fragrance because as you all know fruity notes if it's not like the citrus is all synthetic so most of these very fruity sweet fragrances on the market are quite synthetic and i don't like them for that however this one doesn't smell so synthetic it smells really nice and to be completely honest also the fig almost like the fig tree and the fig fruit is very very authentic in this fragrance so if you want a good fruity fragrance and you don't mind figs and also fig tree as a note i would highly recommend this one it's quite good also in performance this lasts very very long and has i would say moderate to strong projections so when it comes to performance it's really really good now all that comes next uh, except of the first position, I'm not sure about. Sometimes I put one before or after another, so I may change my mind in the future about this ranking. But now, number seven, we have Van Cleef's Anarpel Bois de Ries. Actually, now that I am smelling it, I'm thinking maybe I should rank it higher. This is a woody iris, and it reminds me a lot of Bois d'Argent from the private collection from Dior. Very, very similar. I would say the only difference that this is more irisy, while Bois d'Argent is more on the woody side. So this is a little bit more feminine. The other one is more masculine, but, but both of them are unisex. And this is quite an inoffensive, elegant iris fragrance. As you all know, iris is not one of my favorite notes, but here it's really done well. It's a signature worthy scent, something yet that you can wear every day, anytime, office friendly. It's just this fragrance that you, if you don't know what to wear, you can grab and just go with it. It's more of a soft fragrance, however, so, and this is why I am saying that it's office friendly. It doesn't project very much. You have like a scent bubble around you, so People who come very close to you will able to smell it. And longevity, I would say, is okay. It's not great. So it's, 
I would say a solid between a solid moderate and slightly toward long lasting if that makes any sense so if you are looking for an elegant signature worthy inoffensive office friendly uh, fragrance then definitely Bois de Riz uh, from Van Cleef on Arpel is a good choice now let's get to what I find will be quite controversial because this fragrance is so hyped up and that is Atomic Rose from Initio Parfum Privé. This is quite similar to Delina in the sense it's a very potent rose. I mean the name actually fits this fragrance quite nicely. It's almost a nuclear rose. This is rose in your face. And it has this also sharpness to it. As you all know, I am not a fan of Delina. And this is in the same category. I wouldn't say they are like dupes, very similar. But, but I think if you love Delina, you will also like this one. Uh, however, Delina is a little bit more fruity. It's um, spicy. And this is not it. This is more hideous vanilla with an ambery base. And I think what I don't like about this fragrance is the hideous. I think it's an issue with a lot of initial fragrances. They put hideous almost on all of the fragrances. And I like hideous, but to a limit. Here for me, it's a little bit too much. So I like rose, but not this one. But this is a bestseller. Everybody likes this fragrance. So as all people love Delina, or almost all people love Delina, almost all people love Atomic Rose. And also I would say this is even better in performance than Delina. You will fill the room when you spray this fragrance. It's, it's a statement maker. Uh, if you like these kind of fragrances, I would say go for it because you really get what you are paying for when it comes especially for performance so yeah if you love this very strong almost sharp <laughs> rose yeah go for atomic rose you can't go wrong with it by the way i am preparing a buying guide on initio parfum privé fragrances so definitely stay tuned for that next one so number five i think yes on number five we have beige from chanel again this is one of the fragrances that i don't like the opening and the mid dry down i like it in the very dry down so it's a yellow floral but it's not your typical yellow floral so don't think about creamy sweet white florals this is not it this is exactly <laughs> what you would expect chanel to do with a yellow flower it's old-fashioned <laughs> yeah it smells to me a little bit old-fashioned the notes there is also honey and i don't get it much i do get it in the very dry down but it's really like a hint of honey it's not much main note here is frangipani and as you all know i love frangipani but no this is uh not for me and uh, not for me at all. I love Chanel, I love French Japani, but I am not into this fragrance. And it's the same thing that I don't like about uh, the Gardenia one, which I actually have from and is exclusive from Chanel. They both have this sharpness that I don't like. And they are both slightly old fashioned. So yeah, I don't know, I don't like it and no, it's not a fragrance that I would recommend from Chanel. Let's put it like that. Now, the next one is also very, very, very hyped up. And a lot of people love it and categorize it as a fresh vanilla or vanilla for summer. And that is Giorgio Dama Bianca. This is, to me, yes, a fresh vanilla. There is kumquat in, like, a main note alongside the vanilla. It is blended well. I would give it that. It's... A very well blended fragrance and it takes a while for me to accept it again so I think the theme with almost all of these fragrances is that in order to enjoy it me personally I have to wait a lot of time and I don't like that it has to be an amazing fragrance for me to wait for the dry down in order to enjoy a fragrance so for me personally I don't enjoy it very much 
but I do see the hype behind it. Uh, I'm not saying that it's a fragrance that I wouldn't recommend. This one I definitely would recommend. It's such an elegant, fresh vanilla. This is the best way I can put it. Dama Bianca, I mean, Bianca means white in Italian. And yes, this is a white fragrance. It's very fresh, very delicate. And although it's a Zerja, it's not very good on lasting power. So I would say it's moderate to long lasting with moderate CR. So it's more a fragrance that is, again, signature worthy, elegant, everyday scent. Yeah, you can definitely wear this all year around and also to the office. It's quite inoffensive and yeah, I would recommend it if you love vanilla and you want more of a fresh, delicate vanilla. So not this gourmet sweet vanillas. I would recommend Dama Bianca from Serge. Now the next fragrance so on number two is a, a fragrance that took me by surprise. Again, it took me a while to appreciate it. So I don't like the opening, but I do love the dry down. And that is Histoire du Parfum, 1889 Moulin Rouge. I wouldn't say that I love this fragrance or I am going to buy it, but there is something about it that really intrigues me. It's an interesting fragrance. I, this is how I would categorize it. It opens very irisy. There's a lot of iris. It does fade away, it doesn't go completely, but it does fade away to give way to the other notes. It's rosy, it has also a little bit of this sweetness that I think comes from the plum. Not that I smell plum like really here, but I know it's in the notes. And as I said, iris is protagonist here, but in the very, very dry down, I almost get benzoin, something quite sweet, vanillic like benzoin and it's then quite enjoyable in the very dry down. It's a fragrance that draws you in and like all Histoire de Parfum fragrances it has this old-fashioned vibe to it and the best way I can explain it it smells to me like when you enter an old house that is converted to a museum and there's this old furniture and old, you know, draping and carpets. It has this smell. And not that this smells like it, but I don't know. When I smell this one or smell also other Histoire de Parfum fragrances, I always imagine this. And I, and I would say they are doing a great job because if you don't know Histoire de Parfum, or at least this collection, uh, uh, is inspired by historic moments, historic figures. And as the name says, this is inspired by Moulin Rouge. Is it something that I would wear? No. I like it more from an artistic point of view, but I personally wouldn't wear it. Would I recommend it? I mean, it's a little bit too old school for me to recommend it. I don't know. This one, you have to smell for yourself. <laughs> And also test it on your skin and leave it till the dry down before you make up your mind. Now, on number two is bond number nine, and that is Chinatown. Yet again, a fragrance that I don't like the opening very much, but I did enjoy the dry down. Now, this is a floral fragrance, an amber floral, with the main note here is tuberose. As all like, you know, these floral, especially tuberose fragrances, it is also complemented with other white florals. So you have gardenia and orange blossom. There are other notes, but mainly it's a vanillic tuberose, I would say. Mm, yeah, this is the best way to put it. So it's quite sweet. It's quite warm, but you do have to pass the opening. In the opening, I got this sharp green edge that tuberose and gardenia has. If you are familiar with these two flowers, they have this sharp green touch to them. And this is what I get in the opening and this is why I didn't like it. In the dry down, however, it's very creamy, very vanillic. There is sandalwood, there is guayacwood. There is a hint, a hint, like 
small touch of spiciness that I think comes from cardamom, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, cardamom. And it's not that it this green touch fades away completely, it remains, but it's just in the background, it's just a hint, so it doesn't bother at least me at all. I am not a tuberose fan, this is not my favorite tuberose, to be honest, but it's a really, really good one. And I would say this is a fragrance that is worth the hype. It's, by the way, long lasting, has a nice projection, so I would say moderate. Um, but yeah, it's quite long lasting, so it's a good tuberose fragrance. If you love vanilla, you love tuberose, definitely check Chinatown. But I definitely prefer this tuberose, and that is 100 Silent Ways from Anisha Ney. This is my number one. This is quite nice. <laughs> if I ever choose to buy like a very heady tuberose fragrance, it would be between this one and Danson from Diptyque. And although it's my favorite, I'm not sure that I'm going to buy it. Not because, again, it's a bad fragrance. It's actually a stunning fragrance. But I'm still not sure that tuberose is for me. I'm still struggling with that note a little bit. But me aside, this is a stunning, vanillic, beautiful, feminine tuberose. It's just amazing. It's sweet, but it's not bubblegummy. Again, there is gardenia, there is jasmine also here, sandalwood. But I think what makes it well-balanced, in my opinion, is the vetiver note, which I especially get on my skin. I don't get it much on paper, but on my skin I definitely get the vetiver. It's really an, a beautiful experience to wear this fragrance. It's very long-lasting, especially if you spray it on clothes, with again like a moderate to strong sillage, I would say. I like it. I love the name also, 100 Silent Ways. I mean, this is a genius name. I love that name. They compare it to Black Opium, and I don't. I hate that fragrance. I hate black opium. It's really one of the fragrances that I can't stand, even smelling it on someone. To me, they smell totally different. But again, this is my personal experience. So again, if you love tuberose, if you love a beautiful, well-made, blended tuberose vanilla fragrance with this creamy undertone with the beautiful sandalwood, then definitely get your hand on 100 silent ways. It's, it's just stunning, stunning, stunning. This is for me a 9.5 out of 10 fragrance. So definitely worth the high, really, really great fragrance. And from all these that I talked about, this is the only one that I, as I said, would consider buying. So that was it. That was everything that I tested. Uh, definitely stay tuned for episode five. I am already preparing for it and I have quite a selection again and overall I'm a little bit disappointed this time uh, first episode I got uh, two fragrances actually from the first episodes episode two I also got a fragrance from the third episode I think I am going to get one but this time I don't know it seems like a little bit of a miss for me but there are definitely some fragrances that I would recommend, like 100 Silent Ways, like Chinatown, Dama Bianca, Aloha Tiari, for those who love these kind of fragrances, like tropical fragrances, Bois de Riz. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be harsh and say it's a miss. Uh, but yeah, maybe because it, these are fragrances that I would, re would recommend to other people but I personally would not buy. <laughs> anyway, tell me in the comments down below what is your favorite from all of these fragrances, if any. And also, if you have any suggestion for me, for maybe not the next one, because I'm already like preparing for it, but for future episodes for hyped up fragrances that I should test, please tell me in the comments down below. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumb up and consider subscribing to my channel. Remember, the whole playlist of these episodes will be linked in the description down below. And also stay tuned for uh, Initiative Partant Privé buying guide. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.